Okay, this is a follow-on to our wind math, wind power math area. Um, I know a lot of people are a little bit confused with the translation between metric and British units. Down in the low end of the sm small wind area that I've been discussing, you do see mostly things stated in uh, British units. So I thought I'd take the opportunity here to take this basic formula which exists for the definition of power in watts for wind power which is basically one half times the density of the air times the sweep area in square meters times the efficiency value which is also called the coefficient of performance times the velocity cubed, which is in meters per second, times two efficiency factors, one for the generator and one for any gearing. <coughs> so what I wanted to do was to take that formula, which is a metric-based formula, and see if I could rewrite it, trying to come up with the coefficient of performance, which is the efficiency number, and only substituting in some of the things that we see on spreadsheets, which is power in watts, wind speed in miles per hour instead of in meters per second, and rotor diameter rather than uh, square meters. So the goal would be to try to, at the end here, just pick these three numbers off of the spec sheet, plug it into a formula, and it'll calculate the basic efficiency of that turbine. All right. So let's see what we can do to come up with a new equation. <clears throat> I won't go through these, but here are the definitions of the terms in the basic equation. These are basically this is the textbook equation, and it's all in metric form. So let's take that basic equation and see if we can take some things out of it one of the first things we can do is just assume that the generator and the gearbox are near 100 percent efficient these are two just factors on the end which you never see stated in any data sheet anyway so we can just kind of eliminate those two assuming they're one, near one or one in the equation here so by making that assumption we can <coughs> reduce that basic equation down by just dropping those two factors off. So that's pretty simple. Everybody understands that. Next step is to make a substitution for area. Since we don't really relate real easy to, to sweep area, but we can always go measure the diameter of the rotor, we can, using just basic geometry, we can come up with a, a way of substituting D for A using the formulas we all remember from geometry that area is pi r squared radius is the diameter half the diameter we can substitute d over 2 in here for r in the basic equation <coughs> and uh, reduce it down come up with a new definite of, of a in terms of diameter so, and then we can take this equivalent of A and substitute that in for A here, which is what I'm doing right here, <coughs> and it will generate this uh, long formula here. Well, if you look in there, you got a couple constants. You have a half, you have a quarter, and you have pi. So if I substitute those constants in there, we can come down to a reduced formula currently, which looks like this. 0.393 times rho, which is the density of the air, diameter squared, coefficient of performance, velocity cubed. So we've made some progress here. Let's see where we can go next. <coughs> next, let's uh, take the step right now to just rearrange the equation. Since we don't want to solve for power, we kind of know that number. That's on the data sheet. What we're really looking for is this coefficient of performance efficiency. So that's over here. So all we basically just have to do is to move it onto the other side and push everything else to the uh, 
opposite sides like you remember doing in basic algebra. So now we end up with a, a formula which is looks like this initially but rather than having this decimal uh, in the denominator we can just e substitute the equivalent of 1 over 0.393 which is the same as 2.54. So this is what this equation will reduce to coming off of this page. 2.54 times the rated power divided by the density of the air, the diameter squared, and the velocity cubed. <coughs> so now let's see if we, let's take another substitution here. Let's just assume we'll, we'll always, since we never really know the density of the air specifically, most uh, turbines are rated at the sea level uh, air pressure. So since we know that uh, sea level air pressure in kilograms per meter cubed is 1.225, we can substitute that in for rho in the equation. If we do that, it will reduce further down to this new value here, 2.0854 times the power divided by diameter squared velocity cubed. Alright, everything's looking good. The only thing we haven't done yet is switched over to British units for metric units. So that's not too hard to do. We know uh, we know that a meter is 39.37 inches and we know that a meter per second is the same as 2.237 miles per hour. So I can go up into this equation here and look at the units that are in meters, which is this V up here, that's the diameter of the rotor in meters, and I can come up with the equivalent in inches. <coughs> I can same, do the same thing with the velocity, which is meters per second, and use this value for miles per hour there. So you can go through this calculation, multiply it out, and you'll end up with this brand new formula, which uh, you're free to use, 36,184 times power of watt in watts divided by diameter in inches and velocity of the wind in miles per hour cubed. So we'll take this new formula and that's is going to be our cheap and dirty solution to be able to evaluate different turbines just by knowing the rated power, the rated wind speed, and the diameter in inches of the rotor. Pretty cool, eh? So let's take an example. I've talked about this unit before. It's been around a long time, the Burgi XL1. <coughs> I just pulled the spec sheet up on it. We're going to pick off these values that we were talking about here. What we're looking for is P, which is the power. There, Here it is right up here, the rated power, 1,000 watts. We're going to look next for D, which is the diameter of the rotor. Oh, here's diameter of rotor. They've got it in meters and in feet. And then I put how many it is in inches. And so we'll substitute, since we derived this formula based on inches, we'll substitute 98.4 in for that. And then the last one is the velocity in miles per hour. And we pick that off up here. So you can see that in the equation here. So now we have the whole formula with our power, with our diameter in inches, and our velocity in miles per hour. And we calculate that out, and it comes out <coughs> that the coefficient of performance, which is the equivalent efficiency for the Virgi at this wind speed is 25.1. It turns out that that's not necessarily the most efficient airspeed, uh, but at the rated, if you're, since we only really are given these numbers generally on a spec sheet, that's the one constant we can use when we're evaluating one uh, turbine system against another. I believe that the Burgi, as I've shown in my other diagrams, it actually does go up into the 30s, low 30s, down at the lower wind speeds. But it, uh, it's doing 25.1 using this calculation. At, uh, at its rated wind speed of 24.6 miles per hour. So anyway, hope you found that interesting. 
and uh, talk to you later.